the last convergence test we'll look at applies to a very specific form of series, specifically an alternating series. We've seen examples of alternating series before, and I've got an example here at the beginning, the series negative 1 to the k times 1 over k, and that'll be the one that we test in a minute using this test. And so the first few terms of the series look like negative 1 plus 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 fourth and so on. So if a series is an alternating series, meaning it can be written as negative 1 to the k or negative 1 to the k plus 1 or something like that times a sub k, then the series converges if it fits two criteria. So notice carefully that the negative 1 to the k we're sort of separating off and then focusing on the non-alternating part a sub k. So in our example, negative 1 to the k times 1 over k, the 1 over k would be the a sub k. That's the part that we're focusing on to conduct the test. So the alternating series test says that this series will converge if it fits two criteria. First of all, the terms have to be approaching zero as you go. So the limit as k goes to infinity of that non-alternating part has to be zero. And of course, if that fails, then this fails the divergence test. But also, they have to be converging to zero in a specific way. Specifically, they have to be approaching zero in a way that's called monotonic, which is a fancy way for saying that they are approaching zero and each term is smaller than the one that came before it. So it can't be approaching zero but bouncing up and down and eventually settling to zero. It has to be settling to zero in a consistent decreasing way, which seems a little bit odd and maybe hard to understand, but it turns out to be pretty easy to test as we can see in this example. So here we pick out that a sub k is just the one over k part. So we need to test these two conclusions by taking the limit as k goes to infinity of just that part, not including the negative one to the k. And of course that does equal zero. So that passes that test. And then we test the second part. So is the term one over k plus one going to be less than or equal to the term one over k? 1 over k plus 1 is a sub k plus 1. Is that true? It is because of course k is less than or equal to k plus 1 and so since k is smaller 1 over k is larger because the smaller denominator has a larger result. So it passes those two conditions therefore this series converges by the alternating series test. So the alternating series test is relatively quick and easy to run and it only applies to alternating series specifically. The reasons behind it and some of the theory that builds from this is a little more complicated and so I'm skipping that for sake of time but just running the alternating series test by itself is not generally that complicated.